picked up 25 horsepower. Yeah, so, hey, dude. Paycheck, dude. Look, if you hang out in the performance diesel industry for any length of time, you're going to form an opinion about drop-in turbochargers. The goal of this video is to show you exactly how to destroy one of these turbochargers in no time flat. It is the most common way that we see them rapidly disassemble. Let this video serve as a public service announcement. I have destroyed two turbochargers on my dyno at almost the exact same operating conditions just to prove that this is exactly what is happening out in the wild and killing these turbos. I had to know I needed the data. I'm going to share the data with you. Okay, so this is on an L5P truck. Let's, let's start with a stock turbocharger, okay? A stock turbocharger pushed to its limit, running the 570 horsepower to 600 horsepower tune, will make 32 to 38 PSI depending on RPM, and depending on the aggressiveness of the tune, should run between 140,000 RPM and 160,000 RPM. It's a sequence of diminishing returns. So from 140,000 RPM to 165,000 RPM, you might have 10 horsepower available. And some of those tuners who are not risk averse, who are willing to really push the hell out of the truck, are gonna try and get that number for you. Know that you're gambling with the reliability of the turbocharger. The closer you run to that 165 number plus, the closer you run to killing the bearings in the turbocharger, ultimately. When I say bad tuning, I just want to say that's a tune specifically that calls for a boost command that is over and above what the map sensor can read. On an L5P, that's about 42 pounds of boost. If your tuner is calling for more than 42 pounds of boost, so over 56 PSI map A, they are asking for a boost number out of the truck that cannot be read by the sensor. So the vanes in search for this boost are going to close up and look for really high drive pressure to get really high shaft speed to get as much boost as possible out of the turbo. That's when we get into the death zone. Now a stock turbo only has enough oomph, enough engine in the turbine to get to about that 165 number. And the turbine again is driven by a, a compressor wheel, so the compressor wheel amount of airflow the engine can swallow and burn and run and then is driven by the turbine. So that whole system works together, right? And that turbine as an engine can only push so far until it runs into choke. That choke number on a stock turbo is about 165. While the kill tune was not able to push the stock turbo quite as fast as the STR, we did see substantial damage to the turbine head. Notice the erosion on the tips of the blades, the damage to the nozzle ring. Yes, it didn't die on the first pass, but sooner or later, we would have had failure and this turbocharger wasn't long for this world. If you put a drop-in turbocharger and put our STR in that bad tune, all of a sudden you have a very high flow turbine and you have a compressor that can move a lot of air. That's a recipe for even higher shaft speed. Okay, so we call for a boost limit of around 40 PSI on our STR. And that's about 54 PSI A in the tune. Don't command any higher than that. And the ECM will control boost and everything will be happy. And your vane position will be very low. Your boost to drive ratios will be great. You'll be making 40 pounds of boost and not even 60 pounds of drive pressure. However, if your tune calls for over 42 pounds of boost, immediately your vane position will go from zero to five up to 40 plus. And when that happens, your drive pressure in the, in the exhaust manifolds goes from 60 PSI up to 115 PSI. Yes, it almost doubles. Now your boost, which you won't be able to read on any sensors, unless you add an external boost gauge, will go from 42 PSI up to 54 PSI, 12 more pounds of boost, 12 over and above what we're telling you is the limit of the turbo. When that happens, measuring shaft speed on the engine dyno, we see the turbocharger go to 177,000 RPM. That happens at 3,050 RPM right at the shift point, and then the whole thing goes boom. Now we did this test on a turbocharger that been on my truck, personal truck for 20,000 miles took the turbocharger, put it on the engine dyno, ran it through our whole series of tow tests, spool up tests, power tests, verified everything was fine, checked bearing clearance, ran the shit tune one time. First pass, boom. You may be thinking to yourself, but it didn't happen on the stock turbo. Well, the stock turbo doesn't have that high flow turbine. It doesn't have the compressor that can move more air to burn more fuel to get more pressure in the exhaust manifold. The simple fact is that a drop in turbocharger has better high-end efficiency and can make better use of all those elements of the truck's performance when it's running that poor tuning to transfer that into shaft speed. And we see that on the dyno. In fact, this broken window behind me is exactly what happens. The compressor wheel literally explodes, comes out of the compressor discharge, 
and shrapnel goes everywhere. It'll happen on the first time out at full throttle on the truck. The best way to avoid this is simply not to command a boost number over and above what the factory map sensor can read. I have no idea how we as an institution, as a tuning industry, got in this position where we're commanding boost numbers over and above what the map sensor can read. I don't do it, I don't know who's doing it, but I know it's out there. Ah, it's so frustrating. You build an amazing part, it works great in every application you test it, and then somebody finds a way to break it. If you're installing one of our turbochargers and you're not sure about the tune, or you're not sure if the tune is safe, we will happily review log files, we will happily talk to you about who or how is tuning the truck, we'll happily talk to your tuner, supply boost tables or vein tables or co help coach them. Our goal in this industry is to have our turbochargers work as good as they possibly can. We are tuners building turbochargers. I hope this has been insightful. I'm Nick with Duramax Tuner. We'll catch you next time.